Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Since upgrading to my new table saw, I need to start putting together new sleds and jigs to go along with it. Now arguably the most important one of them all is the crosscut sled so I can get perfect and repeatable 90 degree cuts. I just finished putting this one together so let me show you how I did it. Alright, first of all, I want to thank Acme Tools for their support with this video. If any of you are looking at buying or upgrading a table saw, Acme Tools has a 2018 guide to table saws on their blog, and they did a really good job of collecting a bunch of information together. Now, my old DeWalt job site saw that I had before was on that list, and this new saw stop saw that I have upgraded to is also on that list. So if you're looking at getting into a budget saw or you're looking at a professional machine, I would probably trust what Acme Tools has to say on the matter because they've done the research. So I'll leave a link for that down in the description, and let's get on with the build. There are really only two hypercritical parts of a crosscut sled, the runners and the back fence. Other than that, the rest is all just personal preference and some bells and whistles. It's critical to have very stable runners that fit without any slop inside the miter tracks in the saw. There are lots of different materials that will work for this, and there are even more opinions on which one's best. Last year when I helped clean out my grandparents' old house, I came across a few four foot square sheets of what I believe is PVC plastic in varying thicknesses. I added them to my collection of materials knowing that eventually a project would come up where I needed them. I decided to use this material as the runners for my sled thinking that they will be impervious to any expansion or contraction, they will resist wear longer than any piece of wood, and they would probably have a more slippery surface to aid in sliding down the miter tracks. I ripped a strip off the edge of my plastic sheet that would be wide enough for two runners, then I cut the strip in half. I used a calipers to get a precise measurement of the miter slots, which was three quarters of an inch on the dot. Then I set my fence to a hair over that. I wanted them to be oversized so I could sneak up on a perfect fit. I cut a strip at that width, then tested the fit in the miter slot. As expected, this first one was too big. So I nudged the fence over just slightly, ripped the strip, and tested it again. This time, I could get it to fit, but it was quite tight and didn't slide well. This is exactly what I was looking for, so I ripped the second strip to the same size. I actually cut four runners while everything was set up, knowing that I had more sleds coming up in my future, and I didn't want to have to dial this in again the next time. I hand sanded the edges of the runners with 220 grit paper until I had the exact fit I was looking for. They slid back and forth effortlessly, but had no discernible play side to side. With my runners ready to go, I switched my focus to the fences. Once again, there are lots of possibilities here for materials, but the main focus should be on something that will not move and warp once you have the fences set to square. Some people do this by laminating several pieces of plywood together to get one really thick piece. For me, I had a huge beam of rough cut cedar that had been drying for close to 10 years. I figured this would be pretty stable, and it has the added benefit of being pretty lightweight wood, so my sled won't be too heavy once I'm finished with it. I used a joiner and planer to get the two fence pieces perfectly flat, square, and down to the thickness I wanted. Then, I ripped them to what will be their final height on the table saw and cut them to length. I tipped the blade on the table saw to 45 degrees and shaved about an eighth inch off of one corner. This creates a small space in the back fence for dust to go so that the dust doesn't interfere with a workpiece up against the fence. I'll demonstrate this later. For the main body of the sled, I used 3 quarter inch MDF. The overall size I'm going for is pretty arbitrary. I wanted it to be big, but I let the materials I had on hand dictate the specific dimensions. The first step in assembly is attaching the runners to the body. I put several washers in the miter slots to lift the runner up just higher than the surface of the table. Then, I ran a thin bead of CA glue down the entire length of the runners. This just needs to be enough to hold the runners to the body while you flip the whole thing over. Make sure you don't use so much that there's squeeze out, you wouldn't want to glue your unfinished sled to your table saw. I locked the table saw fence down, then used it as a reference to push the MDF sheet against. This way, I could slowly lower the sheet down onto the runners while keeping everything lined up and as square as possible. With it set in place, I pressed down on the runners to make sure that the glue made contact, then I walked away for a few minutes to let the glue set up. Most of the time I use accelerator with CA glue to speed up the process, but in this case I really didn't want to use any on the MDF, since MDF sucks up moisture like a sponge, and I was afraid that this would hurt the flatness of my sled. Once the glue dried, I very carefully pulled the runners out of the miter slots and flipped the sled upside down. I drilled pilot holes every few inches along the length of both runners using a flag on my drill bit to make sure I didn't drill all the way through. Then, I used a countersink bit on all the holes to make sure that all the screw heads would be recessed below the surface of the plastic. After driving in a bunch of 3 quarter inch screws, those slides aren't going anywhere. I flipped the sled back over and put the runners in the miter slots to test how well they slid. They moved, but they were binding up just a little bit, so it took too much effort to push and pull the sled. 
So I flipped the sled back over, then used a scrap of wood with a square corner wrapped with some 220 grit sandpaper, then slid it back and forth along both sides of each runner. The fit was so close to perfect at this point that I didn't want to remove too much material, so I only made a few passes before flipping it back over and testing the fit. This time the sled moved back and forth effortlessly, but there was zero side to side movement. Moving on to the fence, I lined up the right corner and made the back of the fence flush with the base of the sled. This won't be perfect, but it's really close so it's a good place to start. I clamped the pieces together, then drilled a pilot hole and ran in a screw to hold this corner in place. I needed to cut a reference line in the MDF by raising the blade up through it, so I had to temporarily remove the riving knife from the table saw. Then with the saw running, I turned the crank until the blade just started to poke through the middle of the board. Pushing on the base, not the fence, I slowly slid the whole thing forward until the blade had cut right near the fence. I grabbed my biggest square and referencing off the cut line, I pivoted the fence until it was as square as I could make it. Then I clamped down the left corner, drilled a pilot hole, and ran in a screw. The front fence doesn't have to be perfectly square to the blade, so I just flipped the sled over, lined up the back edges of the fence and the MDF, then screwed it in place. I put a screw in each end as well as close to both sides of the saw line. This way, none of the parts will move around when I cut all the way through the MDF. So here is where we start to test and adjust the rear fence to get it perfect. I'm using a commonly known process called the five cut method. In essence, you take a scrap of wood and cut off one side. Then you put the freshly cut side up against the fence and cut the next side. You continue to do this until you get all the way around, then cut roughly a one inch strip off the side you started with. Make sure you mark the front and back of that strip, then measure each end to see how different they are. At this point, some math is involved, and since I'm not good at math, and I can't in good conscience try to teach someone else how to do it, I'll leave a link to the document I used to help walk me through this process. If you do everything correctly, you will eventually come up with a number that tells you exactly how much you have to adjust your fence by to get it square. To make my adjustment, I found a feeler gauge that matched the number I came up with. I have to move the left side of my fence forward, so I put the gauge up against my fence, then I put the point of a carpenter's pencil up against the gauge, then clamped it down. I removed the screw from the underside of the fence and carefully nudged the fence forward until it just barely touched the tip of the pencil. Then I clamped the fence in that position, drilled a new hole, and ran in a screw. With the new fence position locked in, I performed the test again. This time I had reduced my previous error by more than half, but I still wanted it to be better, so I just repeated the process again. It took me three times before I had my fence as precise as I wanted it, but you could keep on doing it as many times as it takes to make you happy. With my fence dialed in, I flipped the sled over and put screws in both the front and back fences every few inches to keep them from moving around. I made sure to have screws close to the cut line, but not so close that they were in any danger of touching the saw blade. I rubbed paste wax into the bottom of the sled and over the runners to help reduce friction and keep it gliding easily over the saw. The final touch was adding a bit of safety to the sled. I took a scrap block of cedar and glued it to the back of the fence. This way, when the blade passes through the fence, it's contained inside this block of wood and doesn't present any danger to my fingers. I only used CA glue when mounting this block because I haven't decided if this is my permanent solution to this problem. If I change my mind, I can just tap this off with a hammer and do something else. Here's a quick demonstration of how the recess in the bottom of the fence helps keep sawdust from interfering with the position of the workpiece. Without the recess, the dust gets trapped in between and will throw off the cut. With the recess, the dust slides harmlessly out of the way and keeps your cuts more accurate. Well, this is definitely the nicest cross-cut sled that I've ever had, but it actually is very basic as far as these things go. Uh, there's a lot of bells and whistles that you could add to it. Uh, one of them would be maybe a T-track across the top, and that's actually why I left it flat and square the way it is. I haven't decided if I want to add stuff like that to it yet or not, so this gives me the ability to just run a groove down here, put in an aluminum T-track, and then I can have flip stops, I can have couple of different jigs that go along with it. Again, I don't know if this is the safety measure that I'm going to keep back here. It needs some sort of a block or box back here, but I just super glued this one on temporarily to make sure I like how it's working. I can knock that off and replace it if I need to. Um, a lot of other people I've seen who don't need that track, who don't need all the bells and whistles, will actually take and just have a high spot right here over the top of the blade so that it holds the whole thing together, but then they'll actually taper this down and have a lower fence on the edges 
so that you can actually reach over and grab your work pens work piece easier so that might be an option that you would want to go with if you don't have any intention of upgrading uh, from this sort of idea um, this is a very big one uh, it's it's got a 21 and a half inch space between the fences so I can get fairly big panels with that I probably don't need that much space most of the time so I might come back and build a smaller one also but I figured I can always put small pieces into a big sled I can't put big pieces into a small sled so I started with the big one um, that's really all I wanted to say about this so thank you guys very much for watching this uh, thank you once again to Acme Tools for their support with this one. You guys should definitely go check out that blog post if you have any interest in learning more about some of the newest table saw models because they did a lot of work gathering a lot of really good information and really ranking things and giving stuff stats to see how they stack up with each other. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.